comes the fun part. Let's make some flowers. Hello, delightful viewers, and welcome to Vegetarianism, the Noble Way of Living. A couple of days ago, we joined sisters Shannon and Lily of Vegan Danish Bakery to make a traditional Scandinavian cake called a croissant cage. This unique 18 ring cake is served specially for weddings, anniversaries and celebrations like New Year's Eve, which is coming up soon. Today, the sisters will show us how to put the beautiful confection together and give us tips on how to decorate like a baker extraordinaire. So I've taken a little piece of the fondant aside and we're going to need a few little tools. Uh, you can use a regular rolling pin, but I have a little fondant rolling pin. It's just like a plastic smooth rolling pin, makes it easier. It doesn't stick as much, so I don't need as much uh, uh, icing sugar to keep it from sticking. I've got a few little leaf shaped cookie cutters. And then we have a few little sculpting tools. And then we've got a little fondant cutter. So here's a small piece of the fondant. And we're going to start off with, we just take a little, little ball, like golf ball size. And I'm going to just roll that into a little, just like a little sausage, sausage there. And when you're working with fondant, it's a really good idea to make sure your counter is completely free of any kind of little speckles or dust. So what we're going to do, break it off here and here, maybe about this long. And just on the top edge of the rose that we're going to make, I'm just going to pat this edge down. It gives a nicer finish. And then you're just going to roll it. So simply just tuck one side in. Just give it a little roll like that. And that is what we're going to start with. So use this you can actually just put on your counter like that. So the, the one side comes down like this and that's sort of like the inside of a rose. Now what we're going to do next is roll a little ball of fondant and press it out. We're going to make a rose petal. So keep it thick at this end and then just feather out the tip and just work your way around the tip. Don't worry too much about this side. It needs the thickness for support. So we'll overlap that and just stick it on here like so and just press it down onto the counter. Now when you're making a rose, it's nice to either have this protruding a little bit or at least at the equal level. But you can play with it. Luckily flowers, they're so beautiful and different in their own way that uh, there's not really any specific rule you need to follow. So let's start off another petal. There we go. Pat this down. Okay. And then where we ended here, we'll just overlap it a little bit and then wrap around there. Now you can already see the flower taking shape. Press it together. And as you're making the petals, you'll want to make each petal a little bigger than the next one. See if I'm as talented as you are. Yeah, so just press that out there. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Yeah. In fact, it's a nice project to do a few days in advance because you have to let these dry. Maybe while you're watching a movie or just uh, have the full family help out. There we go. And then the next one here. I think this one's good. Is it done? Yeah. So now you can pinch it like this. There we go. And then take your finger and just roll these out. If it's too tight though, you can always use your sculpting tool and just turn the tips just a little bit. Just pat those down a bit. There we go. You can buy the little cups that the fondant flowers rest in, but as a cheap and quick and easy way to do it, you use foil. All you have to do is take a little piece of foil and just scrunch together a little cup. And then just drop your flour in there. And there you go. Set it aside to dry. So now we've finished our selection of flowers. We've done a large one, two medium ones, two little smaller, and a cute little one there. There we are. So now we're going to work on the leaves. 
So what I've got here is the matcha tea, which makes a beautiful soft green color, and it tastes nice too. We're going to just break off another piece of our fondant. So usually I just lay it out a bit. So let's say about a quarter of a teaspoon. There you go, you got your powder. So just gently roll that in and then push it together. Just do your white flowers first and then the green because chances are you'll have some of the dye left on your skin even if you wash your hands or it'll be on your counter and it's a very fine, fine powder. So it kind of gets everywhere. So when you add the powder to the fondant, it starts to get a little sticky. So what you want to do is just, you can dust your surface, or just press it into the powder to get some of that powder in there and dry it up a bit. We'll just roll it out gently. Now with the leaves, maybe about two to three millimeters, um, the thinnest, otherwise they might break. And then you can get your cute little cookie cutters. There's all kinds of fun cutters for fondant. So just press out some of your shapes and we'll use a smaller one too. It's nice to have at least two or three sizes of leaves. You can also do some freehand. Actually, we've got a little extra here that's good for later. So these ones you'll want to store right away. Put it into a Tupperware or an, a Ziploc bag or something because they dry out fairly quickly. Just sort of pat the, the edges down like that. See? So, because you want a nice rounded, a cookie cutter cut is a, is a little too unnatural for these when our roses have such a nice soft edge on the petal. Let's oh. make it match. Now, if you don't have a roller like this, you can also use something like a pin, but um, something pointy like this or, or a very fine knife and just run it gently, gently, gently along from one tip to the other. Don't cut all the way through. You just want to make, some, make a little imprint and then we're going to feather this off to give it a leaf look. And then the pretty thing with fondant is it has a very like um, porcelain sort of finish and look. Now when you lay out your leaves, we'll need some foil again. But this time we're just going to press out just sort of a little bit of a mountainous range here. Some in like, ups and downs. Ups and downs. You can t take your leaf and you want it to dry in sort of a, a natural Sort of a curve. curve. When we put that on the sculpture later, it'll look really pretty. Maybe I'll just choose to pinch this one together a bit, because if it's coming out from under a flower, that will look very nice. And we're going to set all this aside and let it dry. Usually it can dry in about three hours or so, um, but overnight is best, or further in advance. <laughs> Keep the lid off the Tupperware so they dry. Nice, and once they're totally dry, then you can put the lid on. Yeah, they become uh, hard. Yeah, completely and then... hard, like a hard candy. Or... Now we're ready to build the cake while these are drying. We'll be back in just a moment to put together the cake and its delicate finishing touches. You are watching Vegetarianism, The Noble Way of Living on Supreme Master Television. So now we're all our, our um, cake rings are all cool and ready to ice. Okay, so at, in this stage, it's very important to lay out your rings uh, largest to smallest. So what I've done is I use my little cutter, or you can use a knife or, or anything, and just, just wanted to go through the edge here, because I can see that they bake together. Now if that happens, if you actually do what I just did, break the ring. Don't worry, that'll be the back. Yeah. And the icing will cover it. So gently take the ring. If you'll be transporting this, uh, this cake, it's a good idea to either use a little icing under the doily to attach it to the plate. So here's our icing that we made earlier. We'll just put a little ring of icing 
this acts as glue. And then we'll put the doily on top and position it on our cake plate. And you want to make sure, because this cake ends up being quite heavy, that you have a nice, thick, firm cake plate. Maybe add a little bit of icing underneath this broken part here, a little bit to glue it together. There. there. Actually, now you can't even it's tell. It's invisible. So now we're going to start making our icing. On the inside, you don't have to worry. It's the outside you want to look pretty. So what we'll do is do a zigzag pattern, or you can also do a sort of a scallop. And you want to make sure that your icing isn't too runny, that it runs down the side and starts dripping onto the plate. Then you know you have to add some more icing sugar to that to thicken it up. So you want to come almost as far in, but you don't have to worry about making a pretty scallop on this side. Covered but by you need it. to go far enough in so that you've got, it'll act as glue to glue on yes. your next ring. So let's do our zigzag and try and keep it consistent. Okay, now we've done the first ring, then you take the next biggest ring on the next plate and you gently place that on top and try and be quite accurate on your placing because it's so slight once you put all these rings on. If you end up going sideways, you're going to have the leaning tower of Pisa and that's not what we're trying to make today. <laughs> so let's start the icing. So we'll start at the back again. Okay, so now we've just put on the top and we finished icing the whole tower. Now you can see how it takes shape into this beautiful cone-like tower. There you go, 18 rings. Now we're going to show you how to apply the flowers. So here's one leaf. See, it's nice and dry. Let's just turn that. I'm going to place one leaf here. We'll use our icing sugar as glue. So just put a little bit of dab there. You don't need too much. And stick that on. Just hold it for, for a few seconds. Okay, and then we'll take another leaf. It just comes over the top, so we'll just glue that one down. Like this. There. And then now we'll... So just, again, perhaps just look at your positioning before you see where the flower will naturally sit. If you're planning to drive anywhere with the cake, you can even push a little toothpick into that. Let's give it a nice amount of icing glue there. Stick that on, see how nice that is? All right, and we'll put the other one. Now, the cake might be seen from the back, so you'll want to continue it all the way around. I'm just going to put uh, it on the front right now, because I want flags coming out this side. To give it some nice movement, I think one at the top, one at the side, and one at the bottom. Brings your eye up to the top of the cake really nicely. So we've got your leaf like this. Very nice. We'll use these to anchor through. This flower's a little heavy. And this is, of course, the traditional Danish flag. And in Denmark, they love their flag, yes, so they use it. Yes, very patriotic. Put... So there. So now we've got one, two, three. This. Just put in another little one there. Give it a little icing to hold it in place. And then I... And we're almost done. There. Isn't that pretty? There we go. And that adds some nice color to the cake yeah, too. Give it a nice splash of color. Mm -hmm. and, and there we go. Now we're finished our cake. This is the traditional shape, 
and then uh, you use it for weddings or you can also use it for New Year's Eve or like a big anniversary like 50th or 20th anniversary. It goes very nicely. So now you've seen how to make a vegan, beautiful, traditional Scandinavian and Danish kansike. And just remember, be ve, go green to save the planet. Indulge in yummy, licious, gourmet confections at Vegan Danish Bakery, 7718 Young Street, Thornhill, Ontario, Canada, 001-905-882-1331, www.vegandanishbakery.com. details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash VEG.